Hello guys, this is Modest Major here, bringing you some commentary over some Halo Reach, Halo Anniversary gameplay, sorry, to be more specific. Uh, the gameplay in the background is either a 25 and 2 or a 23 and 2. Let me just go into the details of that confusion. Um, at the end of the game, when I look at the scoreboard, it says it's 25 kills, but when I look at the post-game stat, it says I got 23 kills. There was a host change in this game in the middle of it, so maybe that has something to do with it. So it's either a 25 kills or 23 kills. Sorry to give false hope. I'll put 23 in the title just to be, you know, official and not look like I'm false advertising. I can't be bothered to sit here and count the kills. I'm too lazy for that, but whatever. Um... So anyway, I am Modest Major. I'm here to talk about Halo Anniversary. I have not featured Anniversary gameplay on this channel as of yet. I haven't featured Halo Reach gameplay either. You're probably asking yourselves why that is. If you don't know me close enough, uh, I hate Halo Reach. I think it's an awful game. Um, I, I, I just couldn't get around the imbalance of having a primary weapon. That didn't function the way it should have done. And, you know, people will argue that the DMR was meant to function that way. You were meant to be more intelligent with your shooting and pace your shots. I strongly disagree because, of course, you find yourselves in situations where you choose to play a more defensive role because the DMR isn't working out for you, so you choose to pace your shots and be more intelligent with it, but then another player will rush you out in the middle of nowhere and get very lucky with their bloom and manage to pull off a kill that they shouldn't have been able to. It, I, I understand the idea in theory, but I have no idea how it got past the boardroom because if I was there, if I was in that meeting room, I would have said, look, you better take out this bloom or I'm going to be leaving this boardroom in two seconds because what you've got on your hands is a really cool idea for a game. I think Halo Reach could have worked if it wasn't for Armor Lock as well. I don't want to go into too much. Everyone knows Armor Lock kind of sucks, you know, and it was freaking annoying and it slowed down gameplay. Um, it was disgusting, let's be honest. Um, but at the same time, you know, I feel like a lot of what is in Reach's core philosophies are awesome. Like, I love the um, the actual engine, the way it works. I love the aesthetics. I feel like it was a nice change of pace, and it, it made the game feel a lot more fresh the way it looks. Um, I'm not one of these people who thinks Reach looks ugly. I feel like it has this cartoony aesthetic, which at times is really charming. Um, then you have the Forge options being so robust and Forge World being a part of it. Forge World was such a revolutionary idea at the time and it was something that got me really excited for the game. I feel like the power weapon additions were really good in that game as well. You had stuff like the alligator gun, the grenade launcher, um, the concussion rifle. Some of these weapons could have done with a little bit of a buff, but at the same time they were cool additions and they instantly found their way into the Halo canon of weaponry, which I think is awesome. It's just a shame that... You know, despite putting out the Halo Reach beta and doing testing and they asked for feedback, why ask for feedback if you're not going to listen to it? There were literally thousands of people who said, I don't want Armor Lock and I don't want Bloom. People making videos left, right and centre. And it just feels like they put their foot down and were being stubborn about it because, you know, this was one of their ideas and they didn't like the fact that they were being insulted over it. If that's the case, it's a beta. You've got to, you're going to hear criticisms and you have to do something about it. This isn't, this, it shouldn't just be a bug testing thing. It shouldn't just be, like, I, I don't get it. I really don't. And I understand the whole idea of, you know, it's in beta phase, so it's already part of the game and they're already too far. But I just, I don't think that argument cuts it, to be honest, because it's, it's, if you look at the changes that were made in the title update, if they were able to change stuff in the title update, why weren't they able to change stuff in a beta when it was at an even earlier stage? Makes no sense to me. It's crazy. Um, and, you know, if they were willing to admit they were slightly wrong later down the line, why weren't they willing to admit they were wrong before the game, which could have meant a lot more positivity was um, boosted into the gameplay? I don't know, man. That's just me. And I, I hate to be negative. That's why I haven't featured Halo Reach on my channel as of yet, because what's the point in commentating a game and talking about a game which you don't enjoy? Which is why you will not see any further um, Halo Reach on my channel. But I do love Halo Anniversary. I think Halo Anniversary takes everything that I did like about Halo Reach and puts it into one neat little pack and it adds the Halo CE pistol, which I freaking love. The cool thing about this game is that the reticule and the uh, the kick for the pistol is a little bit higher than Halo CE, and the reticule is a little bit smaller, so that it makes the pistol combat harder, but it's still a three-shot kill, so it's almost like a power weapon, and it has a hell of a lot of damage to it. So, yeah, I mean, I love Halo Anniversary. Halo Anniversary was my solution to Halo Reach at the end of that game. Anyway, I've been Modest Major. Hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. Peace out.